Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you to another edition of Radio Biafra Live presentation on this very day, the 24th day of December, in this very year that Elohim has made, 2019, with the time now standing at approximately five minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour regardless of where you are domiciled across the 24 time zones on this very earth you are listening to us we are coming to you live and direct we have come to preach the gospel of the restoration of the Afra. We have come that the will of heaven may be fulfilled by the sons of men on this very earth. We have come to make sure that those who derive pleasure in sadistic eradication of the righteous are not only held to account that, that they will pay very, very dearly for their crimes against humanity. We have started our journey. There is no going back. There is no turning back. Our destination is Biafra. Our destination is freedom. Where we are going is a place where all men will be equal before God in heaven and the laws of man on this very earth. Where there will be no alamajiri, no janjaweed. In a land where there will be peace, there will be freedom, there will be justice, there will be democracy, there will be accountability. And everyone, I repeat, every citizen of Biafra, all those who subscribe to our value system and our way of life, will understand that civilization is possible in the darkness that Africa has become. I ask you to ask those who are around you to participate in this very program this evening and for them to also tell those who are around them to be a part of this very glorious presentation this very day because here the greatest university on this very earth will not only lecture we make sure that you depart with common sense after listening to us because here we preach the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth on this very hallowed platform we continue as always to not only be upright but to make sure that we are scrupulously clean whiter than white and whiter than snow it doesn't matter what the enemy does it doesn't matter what they say it doesn't matter what they concoct we remain who we are from the beginning unblemished unblemished that is why everything we touch turns into gold that is why this very movement that is why this very ipob is unstoppable our enemies understand we are unstoppable and the only way that we can bring what we are doing to an end is if they give us biafra i say if they give us biafra because if they don't they know what the consequences are and they are going through with as we speak therefore i say good morning good afternoon good evening to some of you because unlike any other radio station unlike any other broadcasting platform radio biafra as i see it on this very chair behind this microphone every time zone around the world is listening biafrans and non-biafrans alike lovers of freedom and those who would like to see a semblance of civility 
be enthroned in Africa for the very first time. My name is Imam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over the world and by the very special grace of Elohim Chukwokika Biama Purimingenin, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. Our job is to propagate this very good news. Our job is to lead our people into freedom. And that is what we are going to do. It is a responsibility. We will not abdicate. Not now. Not tomorrow. Not ever. Because we are unbiable. We are unbribable. Nobody can deceive nor deflect our attention away from this very noble mission. And before we proceed, as always, we must hand over our proceedings to heaven. Unlike those who do not know about the existence of God Almighty here, we proudly proclaim that Chukukika Biyama, the supreme creator of all that is made, is at the center and at the heart of everything that we do. That is why we are successful. And that is why wherever we go to, doors open. That is why Biafra will come in our time. And that is why I proclaim with every ounce of conviction within me that Biafra is the kingdom of heaven upon this very earth. And therefore we pray. We him. The giver of life, the creator of everything that is made, who out of nothing created this very universe that mankind inhabit. Only a tiny, a very insignificant tiny portion of it. Why have you abandoned your children, we be our friends? Why is it that your anger is still raging against us? that you allowed people who are not worthy to lord it over us. You must remember this very Biafra that you yourself made. You must remember the sacrifices of old. You must also remember how only you ensured that Islam will not find any food in the land of Biafra. Every other place in West Africa has been ravaged. They have been conquered, but Biafra remains sacrosanct. Biafra is your entity. And as God, the creator of not only the universe of mankind itself, we call upon thee, we beseech thee to remember your promise to our ancestors of old. That we belong to thee and to thee alone. The vandals cannot have any portion in our land. They cannot prosper in light because they represent darkness. The will of him, you must remember that Biafra is yours. That is why we are blessed. That is why other races are envious of what you have bestowed in us. That is why you have not taken that grace away from every Biafran, regardless of where they are domiciled in the world. Our blessing goes with us to wherever we go to. Because we are a blessed people, we are a blessed race. Your blessing can never depart because your word is yea and amen. If you have given it, you never take it back. In the case of Biafra, you cannot take it back. You remember the house of Israel and you took them back to Zion. The same way that Biafra shall be established in the land of the living, that your name may be praised and adored, worshipped and exalted forever and ever. We pray. He said, he say, he say, sometimes I wonder how we ended up being ruled by people that drive cattle from place to place, people who are natural illiterates. I do not understand it. Sometimes I wonder 
and unless the grave of Azikiwe is dug up and his skull burnt, this cause will remain with us. Because despite every warning, every protestation, despite the effort of those who are genuinely educated to draw his attention to the promise of God upon the lives of his children, that those who are called, those who are blessed, those who are chosen, they do not expand beyond their boundaries. They do not look for anybody else to control or to rule. Never. The scriptures tell us that the Israelites will conquer nations and God will ask them to go back to Israel. You must go back to where I have given to you. To the land that I bequeath to you. Azikiwe came and decided that the best thing for himself and for his family is to destroy Biafra. They have not succeeded and they will never, ever, ever succeed because we are here and in our time Biafra is going to come. There is nothing the enemies can do about it. This evening, before I proceed, you must have your pen and paper ready because we want to lay a foundation, the groundwork. We know a lot of people are traveling. We know that a lot of people are heading back home to the blessed land of Biafra. For the seasonal celebrations, and we wish them well on their journey. Not minding the efforts of the army of darkness to make our lives miserable and intolerable. We must continue to march on, and Elohim shall be with each and every one of you. I know that some people are complaining about the hike in fares, but it's only those who do not understand the economics. It is called demand and supply. When people who are ignorant, people that the zoo dysfunctional educational system has rendered hopeless, when they offer commentary, when they offer opinion on things they know little or nothing about, they laugh in amusement. It is called demand and supply. When you demand for something, basically when the demand outstrips the supply, the price is, out, is bound to go up. Of course it will go up. That is the law of nature. That is the way life functions. That thing that people crave and want so desperately, you always see that the price is always very high. As simple as that. If you wish to travel around this very period, expect to experience price hikes because there are many people trying to purchase that same seat. Come on, demand and supply these armchair, highly opinionated, ignorant people do not know. Something as simple as demand and supply, rudimentary economics, elementary economics they do not understand. They think they can use it to divide our people, they think they can use it to mock us, they think they can use it to deride what we are seeking to accomplish is the unity, undividable unity of our people. Now the Janja will understand you cannot divide us because we are one. I said get your pen and paper ready because the our preamble this evening is an article written by Financial Times, the very highly influential Financial Times of London. It doesn't concern Biafra, it concerns what is happening in Afghanistan. But there was a statement contained in this very article, which is why I want to begin with it. And as I'm beginning with it, I know for sure, I know for definite, that every member, at least the political officers and attaches in every foreign mission, especially the Western world, currently in the zoo, by which I mean the USA, EU, Britain, and all the rest of them, they are listening to Radio Biafra this very evening and I wish to educate them that the same mistakes and failures of Afghanistan is what is being replicated in the zoo Nigeria. This is an article by the very influential Financial Times of London. Go and seek for it. You shall find it. This very article this evening, I am going to attempt 
to analyze and to explain to our people, to our global audience, how not to intervene in an intractable problem as you have in the damnable zoological republic they call Nigeria. The British Zoo. The only place where people are happy. Because they were created by a white man. That is how sad, how backward, how useless and how hopeless they all are. Anybody who calls himself or herself a Nigerian is an utter disgrace to humanity itself. And I'll prove to you why this very evening. This is a very fine article, as I said earlier, written by Financial Times. It is called the Afghan Papers. They had to go to court in the USA to obtain these papers. Listen very carefully because I want to use it to build the foundation of our discourse this very evening. I want to use this very article for those who are intelligent enough, for those who are discerning, to understand how imperative it is that we all join hands together to liberate ourselves from that very cage that the British built for us. Afghanistan is a very is a very typical example and I want to tell you the analysis or should I say the conclusion that influential scholars have drawn and how things should not be the way they are anymore because the whole world is watching humanity is watching and we are doing all we can this very day to ensure that Biafra is restored in our time. And as I said earlier, if you don't have a pen and paper ready with you, then very, very definitely you are missing quite a lot. This is a live presentation from Radio Biafra this very evening on the eve of the Christian celebration that they call Christmas. This is a very <laughs> interesting article. But there is one takeaway from it. This very article, listen to it very, very carefully, implicated both the George Bush regime and that of Barack Obama, the administration of the regime. Do you know what they said? That the war in Afghanistan is meaningless. They have been sacrificing American blood and treasure for a goal, listen very carefully, for a goal of a prosperous, listen, for a goal. The reason why America has been persecuting a war in Afghanistan with nearly 4,000 American military personnel dead, countless civilians murdered. Listen to it this very carefully and related to the zoo because this evening we are about to teach those who are dumb what they do not know about international politics what they said here is this this is a summation from the financial times of london they said the reason why because the american i wouldn't say not the it was trump who released it so i wouldn't say american government they have been hiding these documents they have been hiding it that the Washington Times had to go to court to obtain it. And after studying the entire document released by the court, the Financial Times of London came to a very damning conclusion, and it pertains to the zoo as well. They said that the reason why Americans died, nearly 4,000 of them, their soldiers, with countless civilians blown up, is because of the desire of the some people in the some policymakers in the Western world, they said they want to see a prosperous, pluralistic Afghanistan. Pluralistic means multiple ethnic groups living together as one. I repeat, multiple ethnic groups living together as one with different value systems, all competing for the central geopolitical space. What do I mean by that? Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to assert him or herself. Everybody wants to project their own value system. And rightfully so. 
a country with divergent cultural, social, and economic value systems. Afghanistan. Do not forget that they have one common religion. One common religion, which is Islam, all of them. But they are not the same people. The key thing is that they are not the same people. The same way the zoo is made up of multiple ethnic groups, even this time around, with no monolithic religious affiliation. Everybody is free to worship whoever and whatever they wish to worship. It's only now, belatedly, that the feudal north, the Fulani, are trying to impose their form of Islam on everybody else, which we are resisting, and rightfully so. And we have scored some successes, which I'll come to later on. I need you to understand this. The same thing we are encountering is what the ordinary people, the Pashtuns, and all the other ethnic groups in Afghanistan is encountering when they tell Western diplomats, what you're doing cannot work. The West will say, no, we want you to be in one prosperous, pluralistic Afghanistan. Do you know the funniest thing? According to this document, according to this very document, the document says that even those that do it up, even policymakers on Capitol Hill, they know that these goals are unachievable. Now my question is this. If this pluralistic, prosperous, multi-ethnic Afghanistan that has one central religion, which is Islam, if they cannot survive as a nation, if they cannot survive as a people how much more in nigeria that has no central religion no central language no central value system no central social cultural call it whatever you like there is nothing holding us together the only thing that binds nigeria together or nigerians together is the fact that a white man traveled from scotland he was in hong kong as a mercenary they sent him to stop the western advance no should i say eastern advance of france the only reason why you have nigeria the only reason why nigeria exists is because the british wanted to stop the french from going past Dahomey. Let me repeat. The only reason why Lugab was recalled from Hong Kong and posted to Nigeria was to stop the Western advance of France. Or should I say the Eastern advance of France? Because France, we are coming all the way. They have uh, they had already taken over uh, 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 Benin Republic. Dahomey was called. Moving to Badagri. Taking part of Badagri. And they were coming. They signed treaties with Yoruba leaders in those days. British Foreign Service recalled Lugard from Hong Kong and dispatched him to go with the West Africa Revolutionary Force to go and stop the French from moving any further. That is how you become a Nigerian. That was how you were created a Nigerian. The only thing you have in common, the only thing we have in common, Biafrans or Fulani, Albusai, Yoruba, name them, is the fact that a one single white man was recalled from Hong Kong and posted to the Bight of Biafra to stop the French army from advancing. That is all. That is how you became a Nigerian. That is all. Nobody sat down anywhere to discuss it. Nobody consulted the local population. Absolutely nothing. That's how you became a Nigerian. Why am I pointing these things out? Is to let you and the whole world understand that they have the same dream, the same dream of one Nigeria multilingual, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, pluralistic society coming together to jail as one which has never ever happened in history before the world must understand this the type of prescription they are asking you to swallow has never worked anywhere else in the world i will give you a very simple example in africa when the whites were dominating in africa in south africa it was their value system their way of life everything they did was in the african way of life now that the ANC have taken over, everything they are doing there is the ANC way of life. The projection of South African black value system.
of course, which is corruption and all the rest of it. Here you are. The people asking you to remain in one pluralistic, multilingual, multi ethnic one Nigeria, where they come from, life is not like that. Everybody knows that in Britain, England is preeminent. The ruler of the entire Britain is the, her primary title is the Queen of England. That's her number one title. And by virtue of their of their huge population area and of course um, 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 historic military preponderance, it's English value system that you see everywhere. When you talk about Britain, people talk about England. That is no Wales. It's only recently that Scotland is, is now beginning to assert uh, uh, um, their rights, so to speak. And very soon they'll be free. And nobody is stopping Scotland from going. I need you to understand one thing this very evening. That what the nonsense they're feeding you. What for one Nigeria? Let us be one. I'm saying this because Shore is about to be released. And of course he will be released. And I said it before that he will be released. We did a lot of work on his behalf, and they know this. He will be set free. It doesn't matter what uh, SSS or whatever their name is. It doesn't matter what they do. They will free him eventually. He will come out a hero for the Yoruba race. The worst mistake he will ever make, the worst of all mistakes he will ever make, is to try to serve the zoo. Then he's gone. But I'm not sure he will make that mistake again. As one discovered to his horrors yesterday. What I'm saying to the world this evening, and dear friends in particular, is this. The only reason why people are called Nigerians is because Lugard was recalled from a military assignment in Hong Kong to come and stop the eastern advance of France. That is all. The only reason why you are a Nigerian. That is all. And the same thing they are prescribing for you, now, 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 this very night, American policymakers have released documents to the court published by Financial Times of London detailing precisely their skepticism and their doubt that they could ever achieve a coherent, or should I say a cohesive, Afghanistan. Not possible. Now my question is this. If Afghanistan that has Islam as its primary religion that binds them together cannot survive as one nation, as one people, look at Nigeria. How can it survive? Let me also repeat the conclusion of those that actually submitted the documents to the U.S. government. They said that you have sacrificed the American blood in Afghanistan for nothing. The treasure, they call it a, they call it a treasure. The same thing Britain is pursuing in the zoo called Nigeria. The treasure is, let us be, have one more, all the boundaries of the colonial masters must be respected. We are asking them tonight, why is it that your prosperous pluralistic Afghanistan that you have sacrificed American lives and blood for is now unachievable. They have written on a piece of paper saying it is unachievable. Unachievable. And you refer that to the zoo or compare that to the zoo, you will see that we are in the same mess. The world, our people must understand something. Their so-called Nigerians must open their brain to understand something. If you do not collectively believe in something, you're not going anywhere. America is not multicultural. You see, that is a, it is not multicultural. You, sometimes people actually think that giving, sort of giving racial coloration to issues somehow simplifies it. No, it doesn't. For you to become an American, you must swear an allegiance, an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America. So it doesn't matter who you are, you have one common value system, albeit politically. You must believe in the freedom of expression, freedom of speech, democracy, um, laissez-faire, economics, and all the rest of it. So by the time you are swearing an oath, to become American citizen, it doesn't matter if you're from South Korea, if you're from China, if you're from Mongolia, it doesn't matter. You are now subscribing to one, one Judeo-Christian value system upon which the United States Constitution is based. 
Do you understand it now? So when people say uh, USA is, is uh, can't you see we can be like USA? No, 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 you cannot be like them. Because believe it or not, they have one religion, they still swear their president in with the Holy Bible. They still do. So it doesn't matter who you are. Once you come in, you must swear to something by faith. Once you come in, it doesn't matter if you're coming from the Islamic Brotherhood. It doesn't matter if you're a Janjaweed in the zoo. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're a Fulani, if you do Kabbal, Lord, whatever nonsense they are. Once you come in, you want to be an American citizen, you will respect the right of women to drive cars. You respect the right of women to dress in whatever way they like. But it is not possible in your own land. Therefore, people telling you that because you have uh, diverse races in America, therefore you have multi-ethnic, multicultural, uh, divergent values, it is a lie. Pure and absolute lie. For you to become an American, for you to become a United States of America citizen, there are some things you must subscribe to. It doesn't matter if you're a man, if you're a sheikh. It doesn't matter if you're a monk. It's irrelevant. There are basic fundamental values you must agree and adhere to. That is one common value system. Do you have that in the zoo? The answer is no, you don't have it in the zoo. And I want you to understand, they are hiding this report from the whole world. But a court in Washington ruled that these documents must be released. It is called the Afghan Papers. Google it and read for yourself. The reason why I'm bringing it up to build our foundation this evening is so that our people can understand what is called statecraft. What goes into building a nation. Any nation you build without, without a common value system, you are, you are bound to fail. And how did the ancients achieve it? They go to war. That is why there is conquest. Once you conquer somebody, a group of people, you impose your way of life on them. Exactly what the Fulanis do to the house of people. That is how you spread the value system. And that is what we are witnessing till this very day. They think they can do it by war, by conquest. Not that the world has moved on and left them behind. That is why they are complaining. That is why the zoo is complaining because all these things I'm telling you, we went anywhere we go to on our diplomatic mission, we sit them down and we explain all these things to them. It doesn't matter how much you have spent on the zoo. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how much you fast. It doesn't matter how much wishful thinking you have inside you. It is irrelevant. Nigeria can never be one. Because the people are not one. They are not the same. There is no commonality. There is absolutely nothing binding them together. Apart from corruption. And criminality. Or perhaps hypocrisy. That is the only thing binding. Not apart from that. Absolutely nothing binds them together. These are the things you must understand as a student of modern politics. You must understand this. Once nothing holds you together, you're finished. People ask me all the time, why is it that um, the boundary of Biafra is, is in Kogi, is in Benue? And I say to them, because we have at least culturally, socially, we have one thing in common. They say, what is it? Our mothers try to peace rubber. It's as simple as that. No other people does that. It's only us. Our boundary starts from where the women tie to be scrapper to where it ends. As simple as ABC. A commonality. There is something you have in common. We have nothing in common with the rest of the zoo. We, dear friends, we are different. That is why they are envious of us. That is why they are jealous. That is why every blessed day, they are looking for ways to pull us down. Every blessed day. Since 1945, it didn't start today. Every day they've been struggling and fighting to put us on the ground. And I'm grateful to Elohim that they have never succeeded and they will never ever succeed. They go, they killed their friends during Trump rally at a watcher, if you have forgotten. 20th of January 2017. They killed us at a watcher. They never knew that you said, do they think that I am somebody that you will kill IPOB and I will keep quiet? The fact that I don't talk about it doesn't mean uh, uh, we are not fighting for justice. Of course we are. Do you think you will kill IPOB and 
my humble self and IPOB leadership will just fold our hands and say, oh, uh, let's leave it for God. No, of course not. We brought it to the attention of the U.S. government and we shall keep doing so. All the time, regardless of what the zoo is doing, they go about bribing people, uh, recruiting top the high-end consultancy firms, high-end robbing firms in America. Anywhere we go, they follow us. Anywhere we go, they go after us. And what I told you during my town hall meeting in Baltimore was what was contained in Jubril or should I say about Gary's response to USA Today. That USA is listening to propaganda. And I told you this thing during the last town hall meeting. On Shabbat, Saturday gone. I told you a few days ago that the Anytime we go into an office in Capitol Hill, they go in after us and they say, oh, don't mind them, it's propaganda. Don't believe in them, they can't lie you. all the, the same thing that was repeated today to tell you that we are holding them in a, 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 a very bad place, I'm telling you. How we can't let go. And they know it. That is you is crumbling. We have destroyed their image. Complete destruction with facts and figures, the truth, because those that understand what we are doing know that we preach the truth always. Anything I tell you is gospel. If you go around and see it is a lie, then there is no God in heaven. Why should I lie? What for? And now the world, I begin to understand it. But I'm telling those who may see yeah, of course, I met some people that said to me, oh, why, why don't you try, uh, you know, devolution? They will give you, uh, 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 you can have Biafra, uh, but within uh, Nigeria, you know, devolution, so you can... I said to them, they're talking nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Absolute rubbish. There is no way we will agree to anything other than outright independence and sovereignty. Impossible. Anything else... You better kill all of us. And they know that time is coming as well. Of course they know it, and they're stupid. Of course they know it very well. You want to kill Biafrans celebrating the inauguration of Trump. And you think that Trump, you think Trump is stupid and he doesn't have conscience? He, you, you think he has no mind of his own? He will just allow you and you'll be doing as you please. And those, some of them are still in detention till tomorrow morning. In you watch because the prosecutor said we should give him money at, we told him we don't give bribe to people tell just to court and tell, every day is adjournment because the presiding judge has a hand he wants money from IPOB the prosecutor wants money from and we said to him we can't give you a dime we can't we, are, we don't we'll not bribe you that is why they're still in detention ever since Donald Trump was sworn in as the USA president they have been in detention till this very day who did that? is this regime that is running this cabal, shameless cabal, running the zoo to the ground in the name of Buhari that is long dead and buried in Saudi Arabia. Some of you pretend you don't know what is happening, but you know the truth. Because you are innate cowards. You are you are cowards within. You are not human beings. You are black and you are low down and you are cowards on top of it. That is why Abakiari is messing about with every idiot. After Abakiari messes about with it, they will hand over to El Rufai. He will continue the whole nonsense. And every blessed day, I'm in Nigeria. You're not ashamed of yourself. Now you're a complete fool. Complete and utter fool. This evening, I shall sanitize your brain so you can listen like him. You can now begin to understand why we are IPOB. You can't deceive us with very flimsy argument. You can be together. And who told you? Name one country. Look at Spain. They will not allow Catalan to go. Why? Because the Castile, the Castile, the House of Castile is in charge till tomorrow morning. They fought the war and they conquered Catalonia. They fought the war and they conquered the Basque region. Don't you know that? The House of Castile till tomorrow morning, till tomorrow morning, they are the dominant value system. That's how it was done in the olden days. If you don't know, let me tell you. People coming and telling you rubbish. Oh, we can be in one Nigeria. Oh, I'm married from Ugombe. What am I? I'm from Imo State. Uh, my husband is from Ugombe. What do I do? You are a fool. Haven't you seen people who are married to Russians? People who are married to, to Eskimos in, in Alaska. Does it mean that Alaska and Biafra should be one? Because you're married from somebody from there? Well, how, how do people actually reason? How do you reason as a human being? You think you will kill people celebrating Trump and Trump will keep quiet and be watching the zoo. Is that what you think? You are mistaken. 
Only two trips out to America and the whole places. Only two trips I made to the US. This is already shaking. Not to talk of when their friends in America rise up and do exactly as I tell them. The zoo can't last up to two weeks. Not that not to think the whole zoo will crumble. I'm sure they will learn. Britain, who is the colonial master, the creator of the zoo. You know, they love it. People don't know that. They love it. They love, oh, we created it. That's your creation in Africa called Nigeria. Oh, we love it. That creation in Africa. <laughs> we created Nigeria. Don't touch it. Oh. You don't know that you're making Britain, not all British. Of course, they are very wonderful the British people. Are wonderful, wonderful people. Morally upright, sound people. As I keep saying all the time. Britain to me is the most civilized country on the face of the earth. I keep saying that all. once you, you you bring reason, logic, and argument before them, they accept immediately. But you're making them feel very big that they are God. Oh, you know that thing. Even a few days ago, Macron, the French president, said colonialism was bad. What we have done to these poor, wretched monkeys from Africa is very bad. Even you an African can see it. That's how foolish some of us are. You are, you are so blind. You are so hopeless. You, the education system in the zoo have dragged you down into the gutter, into the sewage. Into the sewer, I should say. You, can, you are blind. You cannot see. The people that created all those mushroom enclaves you're in, you call a country. They are regretting their actions. But you, the moron in Africa, you cannot see anything wrong with it because your brain is not working properly. I say this to you. Ever since this whole nonsense started about um, absence of rule of law, now that um, uh, Abakia is now dealing with Tinubu and the Yoruba people, has Britain ever complained? You see the way the, the American senators are coming out writing for sure. When I was detained illegally, did Britain fight that way for me? No. Ever since this has been, have they said anything? The answer is no. Because uh, they know what they have done. I'm not against Britain. God is in. I mean, I, I I happen to be a British citizen. How can I be against? I'm an Anglophile. How can I be against Britain? Of course, I'm not. But Britain will not allow me to go to Britain to create a nation for them. It's impossible. Instead, they will all die. They won't allow it. Have one nigger from Africa come to talk rubbish. They won't. They won't have it. But why should you allow it? Oh no, because you feel inferior. You are an inferior being. That is why you will allow people to create a nation for you and you will belong and you're clapping, carrying green, white, green flag. I'm a Nigerian. Shame unto you. Shame. I say a very big shame unto you because you have no brain. God in heaven knows you have no brain. That is why I call you people are animals. You are in a zoo, trapped in a British created zoo. Britain allowed Scotland, should I say England allowed Scotland to have a referendum. But they wouldn't extend that courtesy to you. Because to the British person, you are not a human being yet. You are just an animal in a human form. Because if they regard you as a human being, the same thing they allowed Scotland to do, they could have allowed everyone to do it in the zoo. But no, no, don't touch that. It's the most popular democracy. It's, it's, it's a force for stability. All rubbish. Russia divided the world did not fall. Russia, or should I say Soviet Union, had the largest nuclear warheads on earth. They broke up into pieces. Nothing happened, for goodness sake. Stop giving me that crap that Nigeria is a, is a, is a most populous democracy in Africa. If it collapses, pure nonsense. Unless you see us as less than human beings, which some of you do. They hide their, their, their racism behind very warm words. Carefully crafted, politically correct you know, nuances to make you feel good. That is all rubbish. Anybody addressing you as a Nigerian, the person is actually calling you a, a baboon or a monkey because the person knows you're an animal, you cannot reason properly. They know that very well. Because if you are, you will challenge it. I, we keep asking this question all the time. They will never answer us. Which country or nation did our ancestors belong to? Or they, or they were not human beings until the white man came?
Is that what you're telling us? We are here to educate you. And you must be educated. Why can't Britain come out as US senators have done to say what Abak Yari is doing in the name of Buhari through Jubril is wrong? Why can't they will never say it? Because this they, they created the zoo. They, they actually enjoy watching all of you um killing yourselves. They they enjoy watching, you know, it's like you if you go to a zoo now, go to a common zoo, you see. Don't you love to see the monkeys jumping from one branch to the other? Playing? Sometimes you give them banana. They eat. Sometimes they give you aid. They call it aid, uh, grant aid to help you. And they are busy laughing at you. <laughs> but uh, as I say, baboon from Africa, well, what do you know? Because you're not self-critical. You are not self-aware. You don't tell yourself the hard truth. It's the same thing happening in the zoo right now. T.Y. Danjuma knows that Buhari is dead. He knows it's Jubril who is there. They know this very well, but they can never come out to speak the truth because they are black, they are Africans, their brains don't function properly. I want to ask Britain this evening, why this condescending attitude? Why this level of hatred towards Biafra? After all, we Biafrans, we embraced British education. I was raised in an Anglican church. Anglican means England. The angels. That's the meaning of Anglican church. For those of you who don't Anglican church back home, it means England. Anglican means the church of England. A, a church conceived for English people. Are you English? Are you English? These are the questions I asked myself many, many years ago. I was raised in Anglican church. Not at the temple in Arochupu that they destroyed. After destroying our temple, they said to us, you have no history. Uh, but they saw the pyramid in Udi. They saw it. Oh. They said, no, 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 you, you have no history. And when they asked them, when I was first asked them, British Oyibo man, but we have a temple here. He said, no, you have no history. Because they don't want you to know who you are. Because they don't want you to know that Biafra is a very special race. They don't want you to understand how intelligent God made you. They don't want you to understand the abundance of grace that lives within you. They don't want you to know how special you are. That is why they tell you all that nonsense. But sadly, some of you believe them. I know we have a history. We have history. We have history and we'll continue to make history. I read. As my brother said in Bantos, some of you don't read. I read very extensively. Extensively, I should. I read a lot. We have history. They came, they destroyed our temple. The same person destroying the house of God in Arochubu, then turned around and said, you have no history. And then I'm asking him, where did my knowledge of God come from? Then, why do we ask our Chubu? To go become, why do we answer all these names? If, if we don't have an original knowledge of God, original knowledge, nobody preached to us original knowledge of God, how come we answer Chizoba? Which is the same name as Jesus Christ. You, of course, Yeshua, not Jesus, Yeshua. Now, some of you will celebrate his birthday tomorrow. His name is Chizoba. We use our name to glorify God in heaven. Britain, the answer Brown, Smith, uh, um, Winterbottom, they answer all these names. Do, do they praise God with their name? The answer is no. You come to people that praise Almighty God by the name they give their children, by the name they give their clans and their kings and their villages. And you're telling them that they don't know God. That is how some of us end up in, Angl in Anglican Church, which simply means England. And now listen, those that want you to be in one pluralistic, everybody do your own thing. But when it was time for Roman Catholicism to lord it over the whole of Europe, they said no. Martin Luther King said no. King Henry of England said no. People who went and formed their own churches, Methodist Church, Lutheran Church, Presbyterian Church, Baptist Church, just name it. All over the place. So why didn't you remain with Roman Catholicism? Because you were exercising your God-given right to freedom of choice, freedom of religion. You want to do what pleases your spirit. The same thing we are doing with the pursuit of Biafra. Doing what is right. The prosperous, pluralistic Afghanistan is no more. 
according to official government papers in America. They were hiding it. Washington Times had to go to courts to ground up them. Just Google the Afghan papers. It's on Google. Google it. And you will see. You will see. Isn't it very funny? The British love those that answer Boko Haram, which means Western education is bad. The British love those that never converted to Anglican Church. The Fulani. They love those who never embraced Christianity. The Fulani. They love those, even as of today, that are, they are, the Fulanis are the ones funding, sponsoring four terrorist groups. Four, four, not one, four. They, yet Britain loves them. I leave you to determine for yourself. I leave that to you to determine for yourself. Especially this young generation. Who you are. Because any day you wake up and you say, I am a Nigerian. You are piling curse upon curse upon your ignorance that you have already. Here I enlighten you. If you like, you take it. If you like, you leave it. But everything I say comes to pass. I told you before, even when I'm looking show, I told you, show that will be released. He will fight for Yoruba emancipation. The zoo will be torn to pieces. To pieces. You, you are in a country where another nation or another na nation is writing to, you, to the Attorney General and asking him to release somebody who has committed no offense. And some of you are saying you are Nigerians. And I'm asking you, before you open your mouth to say you're a Nigerian, don't you feel shame inside you? You have no shame? Anyway, some of you are... I don't know how to describe you. When I went back to the religion of our ancestors, most people couldn't understand it. And uh, this is the same, the same zoo. One minute they are begging. Next minute they are, uh, they are, uh, uh, <laughs> they are challenging the USA. Buhari government warns USA to stay off Nigeria affairs. Can, can, you, can you imagine such nonsense? People that, that depend on borrowing for, for survival, despite the abundance of coal, of gas, of oil, and our brain, of course, the greatest natural resource. When you put a full animal in power, a stack illiterate, no school, no certificates, nothing. They are the ones running for the presidency of the country. And he is your president. <laughs> they said that what in the USA as I tell, I would destroy them. Not me, of course, IPOB with the grace of God in heaven. This is only the this is just the beginning. This is a introduction. You know, if, if you buy a textbook, you have an introduction, and then or you have a prefix, and then you go into the main substance of the book. What they are witnessing is an introduction. Can a we will we will showcase their primitivity to the whole world. Every nation on this very earth, once you see somebody and the person says, I'm a Nigerian, they will be spattered because of the work, the very satanic work the Flani Kabbal are doing. Some of you deserve pity, and I pity some of you. They have won the USA because USA. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo revealed that the zoo was added to the list of nations that are persecuting Judeo Christians alongside Cuba, Nicaragua, and Sudan. And because of that, the zoo have been mouthing their usual rubbish. They go to the behind their back, they come outside, they, they give interview to that hopeless TV station called Channels, and they carry it. And some of you, you know, especially the Majri, they'll be jumping up and down. The administration of Donald Trump also designated Boko Haram as a listen for, as an entity of particular concern. Look at them: ISIS, Al Qaeda, Al Shabaab, eh, all of them Islamic. Those in Africa sponsored by the Fulani. The only thing to understand is jihad, is war. The sooner all of it, the sooner. Theophilus Danjima understand this the better. And let me say something to you. Remember, I used to say this before, that um, that this God that we worship, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the almighty, 
omnipotent creator of everything that you see around you. <laughs> because I don't want to, I used to study, this is just a, a, a slight, um, 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 should I say, deviation from what we're saying. Somebody said there is no God, and he's a scientist, and I said to him, can you create something out of nothing? He said, no. I said that when you trace the origin of universe back 13 billion years ago, you said that there was a big, there was a bang, the big bang, the, the, big, bang, the big bang, they call it. Everything we, we are seeing today all around us came into existence. And I said, from where? He said there was a big bang. I said, what bang then? He said he doesn't know. Oh, but don't tell me about God. And I said, there's something existed before the universe started expanding. If not, there will be no bang, is there? He said, uh, yeah, I think you have a point. And I referred the person back to the scriptures, to Genesis chapter 1. You know, scientists, they said there was a big bang. There was this hot, you know, uh, almost um, plasma-like heat, you know, that, that's a flash that, that exploded and there was everything everywhere. And that was been expanding till this very day. And that is true. Because this very lump of wet rock you're sitting on, regardless of where you are in the world, called Earth, is traveling at over 70,000 miles an hour. But you won't feel it. I'm not sure some of you know this, do you? And I said to the scientist, go to your Genesis chapter 1 and read it. And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. And there was Big Bang. Big Bang was a light, and there was light everywhere. I think that's a discussion for another day. We must continue this very evening. Speaking on that same, you're about channels that most, uh, I, I, I don't know how to describe channels TV. I don't know how to. Buhari's special advisor went on channels TV. Is the preferred APC uh, mouthpiece for me additional. He fought the decision of the USA to add Nigeria to the list, stressing that nobody appointed the USA policeman of the world because he doesn't read. If he's been reading his textbooks or, or, or journals, we know that USA is the number one country in the world. We know that whoever occupies the Oval Office in the White House is the most powerful man on earth. Even somebody who claims to be the spokesman of the Fulani Cabal ruling the zoo doesn't know this. Who appointed, appointed you policeman of the world? Femi <laughs> Adeshina is asking the United States who appointed you. <laughs> Stupidity. Stupidity everywhere. Unbelievable. Unbelievable stupidity everywhere. Why won't they be concerned? Why won't they police you? You will see what will happen to this very regime of our backyard. Britain is lobbying for them. Don't get me wrong. They have money. Britain is the one pressing USA. Don't do anything. These are monkeys from Africa. They can live in harmony. You know, these are, you know, like a bunch of monkeys. Throw them some banana. They'll be okay. Oh, and America will say, okay, we are watching. Until IPOB went there and let, let everything there. And let me tell you, everywhere we went to, we won the argument that the zoo is on salvage. Nigeria can never be redeemed. Not in how, how. Just tell me how you're going to redeem it. How? By giving every position to Fulani Janjaweed. That's how you improve things. <laughs> Unbelievable. Chris Smith, if you know he was a congressman in the US, of course you met him. He is now saying that uh, Buhari, of course, that's the name they because even if you bring Bingo and say Bingo is the president of the zoo, they will take him. Say so Buhari must account for the murderous attacks by Fulani headsmen. Have you heard this before? This is from Chris Smith, US Congress. Have you heard this before? I'm asking you. You have not. Only two trips I made to Capitol Hill. Only two. Only two trips. They are now calling the devil by his name. Fulani headsman. Miyeti Allah. Only two trips. Oh, so, so. Only two trips. So. I went with my deputy chairman for. And the rest of the crew. Only two trips. 
talk less of when I take up residence in the USA to pursue this. You know what happened to the zoo? The zoo will confess we have finished them internationally. They are worth nothing. Nothing. <laughs> this is the beginning. I warned them when we started our diplomatic offensive that IPOB would lay the zoo bare, Nigeria, for the world to understand the atrocities taking place within it. Lai Mohammed is also busy crying that the US government has been misled by propaganda. The same thing they're saying. Who, who, who are the people that are calling propaganda? This is IPOB, you know? Nam the Khan. Don't be misled by propaganda. You people are evil. You support evil. You kill people. There are checkpoints in Biafran as I speak. As I speak, they said they would dismantle the checkpoints. They are still there. They say one thing and they do another. And you want us to be in the same Nigeria with you? To be happy with you? So you can have unfettered access to all the rich mineral deposits in Gaffer land, which we are prepared. I say it every day. We will give it to you for free. Because you know you will do nothing with it. You only have the feudal lords. The cabal will sit at the top. And the little ones down will be doing a rank at the Life all the days of their life. That's how they are programmed. I feel sorry for the house race. You must remember they said IPOB is a propaganda machine. Now they are crying to the USA because we are ripping them apart. We are tearing the zoo. We have that dossier. We have information that you will not know ever it is. And once we see congressmen in America, senators, we give it to them. We play them the videos and they see it with their two eyes. The evil that the Fulani has brought upon the lives of peace-loving people of Biafra land and the rest of the South, as a matter of fact. And also Middle Belt. I, I didn't, when we go to this meeting, I don't leave anybody out. And aside from Southern Kaduna, to explain to the people that we're meeting exactly what... I, don't, I said I don't leave anything out. There is no office I went to in USA I did not ask them to fight for sure. No office. Dasuki and Zagzagi. No of anywhere I go to, my three examples, not minding IPOB phone numbers, my three examples are always uh El Zagzagi, Shawere, and Dasuki. All the time. Because injustice is injustice, evil is evil. Everywhere you take it. And whichever way you look at it, evil is evil. We are fighting enemies. This IPOB that people sometimes don't quite understand. If we tell you the battles we are fighting, you won't believe it. Monstrous battles all over the place. And the funniest thing is that we are winning. Surpri shockingly, surprisingly, we are winning this very battle. Because Elohim is with us. Chukwokikadana Primi Heneine is the one piloting this very effort. Not man. Not man. <laughs> uh, their paper also have said uh, very cleverly alleged, they are alleging religious persecution presidency tackles USA says no one appointed America as world police I'm saying this so the American ambassador will hear it because they'll go to the back to beg or they'll go to Britain and Britain will say oh, leave them, you know, you know they're not educated <laughs> these are ginger weed, they don't know anything it's Alamajiri from Fulani they know nothing, please forgive them and we are in one almighty mess in the zoo. One almighty mess. And they, they, to compound their stupidity, you know what DSS does? Once they are under the course, once they are under pressure, they go and rent a mob. And they rented a mob to beat up um, um, somebody campaigning for Shore yesterday. That's what they have done. They went and rented a group. The group, I don't know what they call themselves. They said they are center for, I don't know, center for whatever it is. Uh, 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 what's the word they call again? They, uh, they said they, they, uh, they're they center for human rights or whatever it is. Uh, they, they wrote to Trump, uh, demanding an apology within 72 hours. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. DSS, <laughs> they, they are so funny, so un unbelie unbelievable, so, so, so funny, so funny, center rights, 
Trump demands apology within 72 hours. A country that cannot feed itself, you import toothpick, common toothpick, you cannot make pencil. You sell oil and gas to buy everything that you need. The creative industries from Biafra land, you have decimated all and shut all down. You are owing the world. Everywhere in the world, you are in debt. And you're telling America to mind its business. DSS went and hired some idiots. Center for Social Justice, Equity. How they manufacture them, I have no idea. Like, how good they replaced me when I was in prison? How they come up with these people, I have no idea. They made a, a, this person in an open letter addressed to President Trump on Sunday. They joined the federal government to rubbish. The, these are newspapers writing rubbish in the zoo. They joined them uh, to rubbish the religious violation tag on Nigeria. The person writing this, I'm sure it's from Middle Belt. The average have been sacked. But because he needs to feed himself, he will collect 7,200 naira to write whatever DSS have asked this useless group to mouth. They said, uh, I, I, I told you, <laughs> it's always uh, the people killing them. All, his name is Comrade Eba Isaac. He doesn't exist. Eba Isaac. So you would think it's from maybe from any good state or, or maybe a boy. Eba Isaac. Enugu. So this Eba Isaac didn't <laughs> see what, or hear that Miet Yala came to Ozoane, came to Nimbo and massacred people. Isaac Heba. <laughs> because he doesn't exist. That's what they do in the zoo. You know what I do? You know, when we go to all this, I package all these things. And I give it to them. And I say to the senators and the congressmen that I meet and all the other people, and I say to them, the think tanks, I say to them, this person, Isaac Heba, doesn't exist. Go and find out. If he exists, if I come here again, don't see me. And they will go, they'll find out the idiot doesn't exist. And they'll come back and say, oh, you were right. The zoo is digging the hole we are burying them in. They are the ones digging it. Every checkpoint, every, the video of every checkpoint, every police, everything they have done is in America, is a dozier. Everything they have done. Once a policeman shoots somebody dead, uh, our people in America, they know about it. That is why somebody came, for the first time, a congressman and mentioned Fulani headsmen. You know, they were lying to them. Oh, it's water resources. It's a lack of... You know what I said to them in America? I said to the Congress people that I met in America, if it is lack of water, when did this um, drought begin? People don't know that the Sambisa forest you're hearing today was set up or was, they started the forestation of uh, Sambisa to check desert encroachment. Go and check. Almost 40 years ago. I said to the Americans that I met, the policymakers in, in on, on, on Capitol Hill, I said to them, so this, do you agree that this global warming, this uh, climate change started more than two, three decades ago? They said yes. I said to them, so how come under the regime of of um, of, of um, Babangida, uh, Abacha, uh, Shoneko, for the time he was there, I don't know, you know how many weeks he was there for. The regime of Abdul Salami Abubakar, the regime of Obasanjo, Yara Dua, good luck, Jonathan. These, the effects of this drought did not drive this murderous Janja with the Fulani headsmen into the south. How come it is under this present administration? Everybody went quiet. I said, Answer me. Did climate change start with you when Buhari was sworn in 2015? The answer is no. So how come it is under his regime that they have brought their cattle down? And uh, he said to me, because um, uh, there is no road infrastructure. And I said, but who has been in power all this while? It's the same They control everything. Do you see how we puncture their lies? I, I, I work for them. They tell all their lies. They go, they, they, they have a very powerful lobbying firm in D.C., Turning out all their lies. One meeting only. 30 minutes. Didn't in the lie at Only 30 minutes. I destroy all their narrative, all their argument. 
only 30 minutes. That is why the whole world is now speaking. And as I always say to them, has it ever happened before? The answer is no. Only two trips. This thing you now happening, now that they're holding the zoo to account, has it ever happened before from America? The answer is no. When did it start happening? After IPOB went to Capitol Hill. And some people question our potency. <laughs> Watch the zoo on, on Ravel. Now they can't hide anything. Very soon, the whole debris saga will be opened. You see what will happen. They don't know what I'm waiting for. They know that very soon the whole Jubil saga will be reopened in a grand style. That the world may know that that thing that Juma is afraid to say. That I will be numb, the kind will always say it. And we have proof. In, although that uh, uh, Nigerians may not understand it. But the world does. They are writing a letter. I am telling the US ambassador, the US um, um, State Department that any group coming out attacking anybody speaking the truth is from DSS. They are the ones funding it. They went and beat up a young man that was campaigning for sure yesterday. Very sad indeed. It doesn't matter what anybody does. Once justice is at stake, you must rise up and defend those who cannot defend themselves. That is what makes you a Biafran. Don't join animals to mock somebody who is down pray for them to repent as i'm sure they have now said they're repenting you must go and fight the good fight you must go and make sure that our enemies don't derive any pleasure or joy from attacking those who are vulnerable they went yesterday and they hired thugs as they always do you are warning usa to stay off Watch list. <laughs> ah, the zoo is finished. The zoo is finished. One even said that the US is um, sowing mistrust amongst Nigerians. Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why this world can never, never learn. You are accusing the USA in the 21st century, the year 2019, of sowing mistrust in Nigeria, whereas the 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 Baba of um, Fulani politics in Nigeria. Amadou um, Bella was the one that said he will not give a job to an Igbo man. He will give it to a white man rather than give it to an Igbo man. So who was sowing the seeds of mistrust in 1957, 58, 59, 60? The period that Amadou Bella was mouthing all those rubbish. So it was USA. It was Donald Trump, yes? When Amadou Bella was talking all those nonsense, the father of hate speech, Full and knees are the, the people that brought hate speech into the politics of the zoo. For those who are joining us for the first time, the zoo is Nigeria because it was created by the British for their amusement, where black people run around like headless chicken to the amusement of the British establishment. That's why we call it a zoo. It's not a nation, it's not a country, it has no meaning. Nobody, no African created Nigeria. Nigeria was created by a wandering British soldier. They recalled from Hong Kong to stop the eastern advance of the French forces in West Africa. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. That is how they became accidental Nigerians. And they have a flag, green, white, green, to typify their stupidity. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. When we speak the truth, they wonder. How come this is possible? It is possible because we have come to do the will of God in heaven. Now, those who before, and what is telling me is that after a while, you know, the Fulani is, uh, the British will advise them on what to do, who to bribe and who not to bribe, the newspapers to buy over. Uh, of course, they have channels already. And then um, they start saying, oh, things are not improving. Can't you see they have not changed? You know, people are so foolish. Obi said, therefore, state of the nation, we are in a state of emergency. The same thing I told you in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 
you are recognizing what was said in 2012 that the zoo is a hopeless case and must collapse hopeless must collapse they say former minister of state for defense and the Ogwa of Wari Kingdom Chief Rona Rosedja of is in a sizzling interview in Wari just from, from Vanguard speaks extensively on some issues and uh, he, he spoke about the zoo that the zoo is, uh, is an emergency and they said Let, let's look at the, at the Niger Delta <laughs> some of you don't know that Abia State, Imo State is also part of Niger Delta uh, you are aware of that before so what they're trying to do is to cover us so south south and south east did not do them bendel did not work midwest did not work now is they're asking let's look at the niger delta as if niger delta is a separate area from biafra this is the typical british divide and rule they give you names niger delta south 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 Despite the fact that you cannot find South South on any geographical cardinal point, it doesn't exist. They conjured up one nonsensical name South South Niger Delta to give them. Whereas in the north, in the north, in the northern part of Nigeria, they are called North. No Niger Delta in the north, no North North in the north. They are all north. But when it comes to my land, to the land of Biafra. They divide you. They cut you out. You're from Niger Delta. You're from the South South. And you stupidly and ignorantly answer to these useless names. Very foolish. Foolish sort of people. He said uh, he's from Niger. What includes him state? He's in worry. So people from Naked, they're also not related with uh, with uh, 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 what in that regard that means so people now from Imo State who are Niger Delta and Abia, Abia is Niger, I'm also a Niger Delta I am from Niger Delta <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. who started all this problem there is a man called Willings he's a British man when the British were about to leave, they were so frightened of the ingenuity of the Biafran people. And in Whitehall in London, they sat down and decided, how do we stop the East? How do we stop the Igbo man from making his um, cousins feel? How do we stop him? You know what they did? Uh, the, the British now said, oh, we are so concerned about the plight of the minorities. Not, listen carefully, not the minorities in the, in the North, oh, but the minorities in Biafra land. Not the minorities in the West or Middle West. No, their target was East, Biafra land. How do we divide them? You know, a British man is very clever. And knowing how stupid some of our people are, the man quietly introduced what is called the Willings Commission. You know what he was uh, there to do? Uh, that he wants to protect uh, the non Igbos from Igbo domination. A white man. But these same Igbos have been living together with the Shekiris, living together with the Robos, the Circles, the, the, the uh, Ephics, the Bibios for thousands of years. No domination. It's only when the white man came, the white man now realized that uh, there could be domination. No? They introduced this. The Al I call it the Albatross, the Willings Commission. Once they dropped it, it was the end, uh, the end game. You know, this is how I... When people say Nam Dazigo is, is learned, I, I, I laugh at them. If I were to be the leader of our people then, I wouldn't agree to this Willings. I wouldn't agree to it. As if he were, you know, anything you can do to give him one Nigeria to be prime minister, he would do it. He allowed the Williams Commission. Williams Commission came and sowed the seed of distrust amongst our people till this very day. That's why this journalist interviewing Jose Jofo is asking him about the Williams Commission. Forgetting that Abia and Bimo are part of Niger Delta. Maybe one day they'll replace Biafra with the name Niger Delta. 
What is the meaning of Niger? Nobody knows. Nigger. Black. Evil and stupid. That's the meaning of it. People who didn't people who are not educated, you didn't go to school, you want to uh, come and argue with those who are learning. How how will you survive? Ask Zoo. They call us miscast, but ask them. How we destroy them in Washington, the complete destruction. We hold on to whatever nonsense they're saying and we thrash it down. Now they understand who they're dealing with. All our education is not in vain. We went to school for a reason. And now we're deploying it. And it's working, isn't it? Who can say it's not working? U.S. lawmakers have written to Malami over shoulder. And all those who are there, we met them. And all of them. Tell them about shoulder. You see the zoo. We told them. See how they are. They have now written. And within less than 24 hours, Malami have said he's going to release Shore and Dasuki. Some of you never knew we're campaigning for Dasuki as well, do you? That's how it goes. That is the way we function. The same way we are campaigning for El Zagzagi and he too will be freed as well. If you have something against somebody, go to court and prove your case. Not in the middle of the night to come and kidnap somebody and say, uh, we are protecting the, the so, so, sovereignty or integrity of Nigeria. Nigeria, I know you can't know Nigeria. Who built Nigeria? Did you build Nigeria? Nigeria is a British colonial investment. Has nothing to do with you. The fact that you're there controlling the 10% the, the, the of the places of the oil doesn't mean that you, you, you own it. It's not yours. It is not yours. It is not yours. Oh, oh, go, go. They are, I said, oh, they, they, I said the world will listen. They must listen to what we are preaching. Because Nigeria is a hopeless case. Anybody who is a Nigerian, anybody who believes in Nigeria, you are either deceiving yourself or you're a hopeless case. You must be. You must be. And at last, the Christian Association of now they have found their voice. We have done the hard work. That same IPOB they despised. We have gone to America. We have done the hard work in America. And all of a sudden, they are now talking. They are now talking. They are now back the placing of Nigeria on watch list. Because they are now hiding under USA to say something. When we are saying it before, they said it's hate speech. John Nam Dekano wants to break up Nigeria. He wants to sow the, the, the seeds of disunity in, in our polity. He is hitting up the polity. Oh, you boy. He's hitting up the polity. Today, they have gone round 360 degrees to the position we adopted from day one. They have come round to understand what we are doing. Even the, the spineless and toothless Christian Association of Nigeria can now speak because of the work IPOB is doing. All those people you are called miscreants, you see? And I love it. I am the number one miscreant, number one. You see? Those miscreants are now showing you the way. Those miscreants that told Tinubu that you are backing up the wrong tree. I told Tinubu you will fail, you will fall, they will use you, they will dump you. Today, it is clear for the whole world to see. They have dumped him. Those miscreants. You know, I know they, they admire us secretly. Of course, I, I know they do. They admire us a lot. And they wish they can be like us. But unfortunately, they cannot be because we are Biafrans and they are not. Biafra is a very special race. Special. Special, special race. Special. And that is why Britain hates us. Britain knows that, you know, any man they are going to mourn, they go in the spirit. They received the revelation that Biafra is the light of Africa. And Britain chose it upon itself to make sure that that light will never be lit. Because some people in Britain believe, they, they, sometimes they wonder how do I know all these things, but I do. They believe that 
should Biafra rise up in Africa that the world will come to an end? Ask them, they will tell you secretly. That is why they, they will do anything in this world to stop the emergence of Biafra. But I said to them that I worship Elohim. Let us see who created the universe. If it is God in heaven or man on this very earth. That is why I know that Biafra will come. There is nothing anybody can do about it. It doesn't matter what it doesn't. I'm telling you the truth. Before God and before man, it doesn't matter what they do. It's unstoppable. And they know it. Even the cabal in Asorok, they know Biafra is unstoppable. They know that. They have considered that Biafra will come. Who is going to stop us? Nobody can. They have not given birth to those who are going to stop us. They know that very well. Now they have seen a type of stubbornness in Biafra they never knew existed before. They are wondering, oh, but what do we, how do we stop them? What do we give them? It's impossible. It is too late. We are Biafrans. Unbribable. Unbuyable. They cannot buy us. No, they know it. The only thing we want is Biafra. The main Christian body in Nigeria, in the zoo, they now agree there is Islamization agenda. The same thing that I used to say. They say it's hate speech. Today they have accepted it. Because we see, we see decades ahead. The same Christians, they have their prophets. They have their prophets. They cannot see. They cannot see, they are all blind. All they see is a tight. Every week, a tight, they pay us tight. That's all they see. They are blind in this, in the spirit. Blind, completely blind. I told you there was Islamization. Even before you voted Buhari in, I told you what was going to happen. Is it not happening today? Is there anything that I said that's wrong? Everything that I told you, it is happening right before your eyes. Why should I lie to you? Because any day I lie to you, Chuko Kikabiyama will take away that gift from me immediately. Anything I proclaim comes to pass. Today, now, eh, that's Islamization. Yes. That word is, yes, there is, yeah, the Christian Association of Nigeria, yes. They have agreed. I told them their foot soldiers are Miyeti Allah. They don't they answer from the headsman, they are Miyet Yala. They are the ones El Rufai Abak Yari is using to drive fear into your soul so you become cowards, all of you. But I'm very grateful that due to the very wonderful work of my dear friend Fanik Ayode, the man I call my father Ayode Banjo. And now I add the Alafin of Oyo to that very list. Of people that I respect and revere in Yoruba land. Collectively, they are now beginning to find their voice. I said it before, without apology, on Radio Biafra for many years. Many Yorubas hated me for it. I said that Yorubas are cowards. I said it many times. But when Danjuma sat in, or should I say, stood in front of them and told them to their faces, your people are cowards, you're not saying anything. They are laughing off for your up and said, What are you doing? You are all cowards. They, they, I referred them to my previous preaching. They said that um, I'm, I'm, uh, I insult them. I don't insult anybody. I'm even harder on evil people than any other. I just tell you the simple truth. You may not like it, but it's the truth. Because eventually you will see it. As Tinobu is discovering today, the same thing, uh, Tunupu Zone was only last year I said it. All these things you're doing, running errands for, for, for Fulani Kabbal, you think they love you? you? Seriously speaking, do you think they love you? They can't allow you to lead a Juma prayer in the north. You can't lead Friday prayers in the north. You cannot. And you think they love you? Because you want presidency, you sell your own soul. I'm glad that now he has seen the light. And I believe that he has also re repented. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. The time now is approximately 26 minutes 
to the top of the hour to 9 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, a land I love so much and have sacrificed so much for. Chukoki Gabiama knows this. Chukoki Gabiama knows. They are working every blessed day with terrorists. The full army. You see the army. You see the police. Some of these, oh, Nigerian police came today. You are a fool. What you're looking at is a terrorist in police uniform. Buratai came to Islamize. Buratai came to Islamize. Some of you are so foolish. Their tenure have all elapsed, including Buratai. They have all elapsed. They said, no, the country is at war now. We have war with who? In the South? In Biafra land? War with who? Is what I ask. Who are you fighting with? Who is this war against? In the North and the South? You people funded Boko Haram to drive away Jonathan from office? When he heard for Boko Haram, all of you stood up from the Sultan of Sokoto to condemn in Hedrika. You asked Jonathan to remove Hedrika and he did. He obliged you. Isn't it very funny? And today, those terrorists attacked uh, Jonathan's home in Ethiopia. One person was shot dead. Did it. Can Biafrans remember the 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 preaching I made on the eve of elections in the zoo in 2015 and what I told Jonathan I told him he was going to lose and I told Jonathan that Obama would take him out of office I told him he was going to lose did he not lose I told Jonathan to go to, to Enugu and to declare in Enugu that he would support Biafra he didn't do it today terrorists are chasing him in his village in Bayelsa <laughs> hey, zoo, zoo, zoo. And to make matters worse, many more are coming. Forget the influx you saw on the video, thousands of them coming in. Many they have sent the advance party. Nigeria police, if you're looking at a full army man in uniform, Nigeria police is a terror, a confirmed terrorist you're looking at. But if, uh, uh, with legally issued AK-47 and police uniform. The army is worse. Every terrorist in the north is in the army. Even if they go and kill and they capture them, they put them in the army. And they push them down south to continue their killing. Are you doubting me? Are you, you are in Abia State right now. Go to Abia, Zone 9. You know, my hand, ask them to bring out the list of transfers, those going to the north and those coming in from the north. You'll be shocked. That's what they're doing. All the checkpoints, that, that is all. The, people don't understand it. Their aim, their aim, because they know they cannot compete academically. They know they can't. If you, if you, if you allow rotational presidency, they know they will starve to death because they are lazy. They are cursed. The only thing they can do is to move cattle from place to place. That's all they can do. So they need that power to remain relevant. And you never ask yourself this question. What is it that a people without any scientist, no poet, not absolutely nothing, what can they contribute to an economy? Every time they're dragging, they want to be, it's their turn, they want to be president. What can they bring to the table? What can the Fulani bring to the table? The answer is zero. Um, Buhari, before he died, where's the certificate? Uh, I lost it. Which school did you go to? He doesn't know. Jibril, which school did you go to? He doesn't know. Tanko Muhammad, your CJN. Where is your school certificate? It was eaten by termites. And some of you are going about saying, I'm a proud Nigerian. Oh dear, I think the worst punishment God can ever give to anyone is to is to allow you to be born in that place, to be honest. To be a Nigerian is the worst curse that can befall anyone. Go to Abia State. Three days, just a four days ago, a group of Fulani killing squad arrived. I mean, you can't report by 2 a.m. They have come to take over. You see Nigeria. Nigeria. <laughs> they have come to take over Nigeria. That's 
they, they want to sit on the resources in our land until they sit on it, they're not going to rest. The human rights have risen up again in Iraq. They have started taking over places again in Iraq. Are you aware of that? Do you think these people will stop? <laughs> Do you think they will ever stop? I'm talking to Tinubu, to all the Yoruba leaders. Do you think that this, neme this nemesis from the north will ever stop? It's going to get worse. They are coming in their millions. And there will be no hiding place anymore. When the time comes, look at Sim Lebanya Rasem, I told you so. Go back to all my brokers from 2012 to today. I've been warning you about the same thing over and over and over and over again. But you won't listen. You will never ever listen. For some of you, we are born daft. The Fulani war machine is around. The Nigerian Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Abubakar Damu, is one of them. Police people, you see, that is why in the entire Biafra land, it's only Fulanese who are police commissioners. Forget the one or two, is it a or whatever, name the idiot is answering. A puppet, a lapdog. They have used Audio Zokalo, they put him in prison. They are now chasing if I but they may leave him. They are now dealt with Tinubu. Who knows, they might uh, probe him a year to the end of this administration or this regime's tenure. Who knows? <laughs> Write it down somewhere else. It is, that's what I said. <laughs> they don't understand anything and they will never know. The Nigeria Police Division headquarters in Aba, in Abia State, will be taken over by these people. They are there. That it is the highest level of deception going on. A single police station in Aba taken over. The central police station in Omoaha, along with the road, has been taken along Bend Road has been taken over. So now in Omoaha is gone. Is the is the full and terror headquarters you have? Omoaha zone nine is the full and terrorist headquarters. There are some gear friends all over the world. When they tell them about what is happening, they say, ah, you know, uh, my brother leave that thing." You know the usual way they, they talk. One day, they will be killed by these terrorists. And then people will say, what is IPB doing about it? But now we are telling you, you won't listen. You won't listen. The same way I told Tinubu, Tinubu didn't listen. <laughs> Today they've dealt with him. I told Audio Zokawa, who, as I said before, inside is a very good man. Very good man. Inside, inside him is a nice man. <laughs> but serving the zoo can only bring you shame. Even to the Yoruba leaders. If you serve the zoo, you come back with shame. Once you have an ambition, you're finished. Completely finished. But you know, these are they're like lemons. They keep going over the cliff to, to plunge to their death. They never listen. You know poverty, what poverty does to the mind. They see that you know allure of money sloshing all over the place, being you know, security votes and all that. They say they think to themselves, Oh my goodness, I, I need to be part of this phone. And I'll do anything for imagine. And in the end, they are used and they are dumped. As it is now very clear to all. And in the process, the terrorists are coming in, destroying, decimating, pillaging. The same middle belt they convinced that Biafra is their problem. Go and kill all of them. Today they are dealing with them. The same thing why Benjamin had killed Irons. It was Benjamin that killed Irons. He was Irons' ADC. His name is Theophilus Danjuma. He's a Christian. But he joined Muslims to kill Iran. <laughs> Very funny, isn't it? Today, they are dealing with their people. Danjuma's people are being put to the sword because they don't understand the mindset of the Fulani North. They don't know it. They tell you, oh, don't worry, we'll obey the law. The law. You know, the funniest thing is, they come out and say, oh, our judiciary is strong. We, 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 we run a constitution. But inside them, they have no intention of obeying the law. The police have made it very clear that they are looking for a Jofo. Whereas a court of law said a Jofo is not a wanted man and can never be. My attorney, thank you, Jofu. When there is a dispute, you know, some people, 
I want to ask those of you who are in universities in Nigeria, do you know that in a democracy, when there is a dispute, you go to a court, a resolution um, tribunal or panel or whatever it is? Are you aware of that? Do, do, let, let me actually ask Nigerians, do you know what a, a court of law is there for? Because I don't think that Nigerians actually know what a court of law is. They think that it is the right of anybody with AK-47 to decide the guilt or innocence of a man. Once you are, once you are arrested, you're, you're guilty. Are you sure that, that Nigerians actually know the meaning of a court of law? What law courts are all about? A court of law have looked at the illegal assassination attempt on the life of Ifanyi Ejo from my attorney and determined that nothing should happen to Ejo for the police should not arrest him. The police were served with the documents from the court of law. And they turned around and they told BBC, that useless BBC, useless. They said, oh, we were not aware of it. Oh, you were served the papers. I've been telling BBC, I don't want to go after BBC in our land. Because I believe in freedom of expression. Anybody can say whatever they like. But BBC cannot be supporting the fall and the terrorist north against our people. And we'll let them be. I repeat, BBC, you will not be carrying Fulani Islamic terrorist propaganda in our land and will allow you to have peace. You won't have it. The court in Oka sat and the judge determined that a Jofa is a free man. He's a free man to continue with his court case next week because we are going to Abuja to destroy them in their court of law. That is something they must know. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. The time now is coming up to, I believe it is 14 minutes to 9 p.m. in the land of Biafra. If I'm not mistaken, of course I'm right. Of course I am very much right. And as we said before, when they when they burnt our market in, in Kano, in multiple places in Lagos, in Benin, in Aba. They said no, it's, it's um, it's um, it's um, uh, some called it arson, some called it other names. So, so, an accident, a canister exploded, gas canister, and it is a very big shame that once again, once again, is a sad Christmas for most traders in Onisha. As they call it mystery fire, fire from heaven or maybe from hell, destroyed Onisha market near Haybridge. Our heart goes out to those of them who may have suffered in this very terrible, terrible tragedy. Very, very sad indeed. It is full of the people. That's what they're doing. They are destroying our way of life. They come to our markets and set it on fire. They sell their cattle. And on their way back, they, they use accelerants, pour it all over the place and set fire to it. If you pursue them, they'll run to Anisha Barracks. Their brothers are there waiting for them. The army and the police in Biafra and the entire south is there for the protection of terrorists. They have set Anisha Market once again on fire. And some idiot will come up tomorrow and ask us to believe in one Nigeria that um, things are getting better. They are building a bridge for you or they will build a road. It's your turn in uh, 2099. I'm very, very happy that our people no longer succumb to such nonsense. On the shall market on fire. Who set it on fire? They full and need the ginger weed. That's what they do. Seeking to emasculate us politically and economically. But they will never succeed. Because as we said to them before, go back to all the broadcasts we have made since 2012 and tell me if there's anything we have said that didn't come to pass. If there's anything that we have said that is not in place. Therefore, this very evening, I thank all of you for listening. But before we bring this program to an end, I have a very important announcement to make in terms of the house rules of IPUB. Because most of our leadership does not understand this. We have decided to do this and to bring it into place to forestall or to stop any misunderstandings within family meetings and within family units all over the world. People can set up WhatsApp groups as long as you're a coordinator. But let me make this very clear. 
no national coordinator is allowed to belong to any WhatsApp group that contains more than his or her executive. Allow me to repeat. As a national coordinator, you are only allowed to interact or be in a forum with your executive. You are not to be in any other forum. Allow me to repeat very clearly. You are not allowed to be in any other forum. If it is found, or if we discover that you are in another forum, not the ones where you have the ear and attention of your executive members, you will be expelled from IPAB. Let me make it very clear once again. As a national coordinator, you have no business being in the WhatsApp forum of a local unit. You have no business being in the WhatsApp forum of a region. The only WhatsApp forum you belong to is the one that contains your officers. That and that alone. But once in a while, you may be invited to attend a meeting. In which case, you are authorized to participate in that very meeting. But other than that, on a day-to-day -day basis, you are not allowed to belong to any other forum. It is very, very important. And also, let me make this very clear. When a national coordinator wants to conduct or hold a meeting with IPOB family members in a particular region or zone or unit, you must do so with the consent of the coordinator of that very area. Very, very important so that they know you're coming, they know you want to phone in, and he or she should be privy to whatever thing that you have to say beforehand. The only people allowed to be in any forum with a national coordinator is the executive of that very country, or the executive of that, of that very region, or the executive of the zone, or the unit. And no dues or levies will be deemed as being approved unless our sister Nene is in the know about it and gives her approval. Of course, she will talk to me about it first as well. Allow me to repeat all over the world. No dues or levies, no dues or levies by any national coordinator or regional coordinator or zonal coordinator or unit coordinator unless approved by Germany. If you go against it, you will be. Don't say we didn't, I didn't warn you. If you go, you will be expelled from IPOB. Don't say I did not warn you. Please bear that in mind. There are those that think that I'm building a cabal with an IPOB will give them leverage or uh, the right to misbehave or go contrary to others. It doesn't matter who you are. Once you don't obey others, you will be expelled from IPOB. Go and ask those that went before you what became of them. We want to be one family. We want to work together towards the realization of this very noble goal. And we want to give the zoo hell. We are not going to do it with people thinking that they can operate outside the command and control structure of IPOB. It is not possible. If you are ill-disciplined, you cannot control yourself, then <coughs> IPOB is not for you. You must go somewhere else. And with that, we have come to the end of today's proceedings. Here on Radio Biafra is where we propagate the gospel of resurrection of Biafra. Because we have no other religion other than Biafra. I state this on record. Our religion is Biafra. Here on Radio Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim, the God Almighty in heaven, Chukokika Biama is our God. From me... From here, good evening.